Hello and welcome to my annual look at winter flying tips. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a long time, you'll have seen various iterations of these. I do one of these about this time every year. If, however, you've come into the fantastic world of radio controlled planes, quadcopters or whatever in this year and been playing with those great things through summer, spring or autumn, then your first winter can be one where you're going to learn a lot of lessons. Flying in winter in particular is a little bit of a different proposition than what you might have already encountered. So the reason for this video is to share some common sense and some experiences from all of my years flying in winter months so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made and some of my friends make when we go out to fly. And it's a gentle reminder to me as well as I'm making this video to avoid some of these common mistakes. So the first thing to talk about is going to be the elements. The weather is going to be different. It's going to be either freezing, it's going to be very wet, potentially going to be windy, but if it's too windy, you're probably not going to be flying. But the extra moisture that's kicking around, in particular the dew that sits on things like the longer grass, which hasn't been cut in the parks and fields that you fly in, uh, all of that is, gets flicked inside the model. I find particularly with quads and with fixed wing models, as I land, it just tends to eat all of that moisture and get it inside. Now, uh, this is a very uh, British uh, idea, but I keep a little tea towel in the bag that I take to the field just to wipe models down because when you pick them up, they're dripping wet and they've probably got a good smear of mud on there as well. Second thing to be aware of is flying in winter, and we'll talk a little bit more about FPV in a minute, but flying FPV in winter is amazing. You will see uh, a magical landscape covered in snow, glittering, and it'll look amazing. Uh, when you come into land, snow can be wonderfully soft uh, at helping support landings and helping you land and not damage the model. Again, the snow tends to get sucked in all of the uh, air vents and things and check your model internally. You'll probably find there's a chunk of snow sat by the side of the battery. And if you just put that in the boot of the car or put it in somewhere in the home, it's going to then melt and just soak all the electronics. So be careful of that. The other thing to be careful of, and I actually had this this week, is the ground, if it's frozen, particularly if it's even if it's a grassy ground, uh, if the grass is quite short, it can be very, very tough on a model to land on that. It's almost like landing on tarmac and it can damage the bottom of the model. So don't assume because you're flying on grass, particularly when everything is really, really frozen, that that isn't going to be a problem. Just be aware of that and almost treat it like you're coming into land on a hard surface. The other tip I'd give you is particularly things like quadcopters. If there is mud and you do manage to land in the one puddle in the middle of the field, uh, my quads in particular seem to have some kind of magnetic attraction to muddy puddles when I go to fly at this time of year, then my advice would be to let it dry and then use a soft brush just to get rid of all the mud away and try not to brush it into the bearings. Uh, if the bearings uh, don't feel great, then do flush them with uh, oil or grease. But the worst thing you can do, in my experience, is to try with your little tea towel, again, apologies for being very, very English at this point, uh, is to kind of try and rub the, uh, the muck off the motor because all you do is you just tend to kind of push it further into the bearings and the places that's going to be really tricky to get out afterwards. When you get home from the field, uh, bring the models into the house, put them in a warm place and any moisture that has got between the gaps in your wings or uh, into the motors or whatever can dry out naturally and you're not going to put them away and that moisture is going to sit there and potentially cause corrosion or problems for you when you come to next fly the model. Next thing to consider is the LiPo battery. LiPo batteries, like all batteries pretty much, uh, rely on a chemical reaction to release the electrical energy that's stored as chemical energy. Now, how efficient a chemical reaction happens is a function of the temperature. So the colder it is, the slower the chemical reaction and the slower the battery can actually release the power. And that's exactly the same with LiPos. So be aware of that. If you have been getting 10 minutes flight time out of the battery in summer, I'd probably drop that down to about eight minutes. 
watch the battery voltages if you're flying FPV you'll find that they will discharge an awful lot faster you won't get as much flying time don't rely on the timer and the settings that you got away in summer you'll find that you'll land and you've pushed your batteries too hard uh, they won't like it and they might puff up and then it's a time to replace them with a new one if you're not going to fly in a model and you have model specific batteries, uh, use something like a discharger to get them down to 3.8 volts a cell. Uh, I tend to store mine in old biscuit tins. Again, sorry, amazingly, frightfully English at this point. Um, and uh, put them somewhere where if something happens to them, they're not going to cause too much damage. Uh, putting them at 3.8 volts a cell will reduce the stress on the individual cells within the LiPo pack and then sticking them away, they'll gently discharge, and then by the time you come to pull them out uh, in the beginning of spring where you want to fly again with that particular model, you'll find that the batteries will thank you. Putting batteries away fully charged isn't a great idea. The stress on them can cause irreversible chemical changes in the battery, and they won't perform as well, or they could even puff up. A little tip, I, when you have finished a flight and you take off the LiPo battery, if you've been pushing it hard, it is slightly warm. Um, I tend to try and wear something like fingerless gloves if I'm flying. I don't like to have anything on the tips of my fingers. There are loads of different ways to keep your hands warm. Uh, but if you're having a break and it's your buddies who are flying, I tend to just have that LiPo pack in my hand and just hold it to keep my fingertips nice and warm because uh, you'll find that you will lose a little bit of dexterity as your hands get really cold and as the rest of you gets cold uh, your reactions will slow as your teeth start to chatter couple of tips for line of sight flying uh, for those who like to fly line of sight i would recommend adding leds onto the model uh, you tend to find that you have brief moments of very bright sunshine but most of the time it's going to be gray overcast the sun's going to be quite low in the sky and uh, you're only going to get a very short window for flying so to kind of push that as much as you can i would add orientation leds to whatever you're flying uh stay tuned there is going to be a video soon uh, about an, another product that i'm getting in uh, where you can control leds from a switch on the radio and check the channel i've done loads of videos where you can actually turn leds on and off so that if you start to get into a situation where orientation is tricky you can turn on the leds and that gives you a little bit of help be aware of the lower cloud cover and also mist as well uh, you might think that it looks fine with mist i've done this myself uh, and then start flying and the mist kind of comes in a little bit and then you have to kind of uh, get the craft back do keep it close enough to you so if the weather changes you can bring it in i also find that the denser colder air um, can make the model behave a little bit differently too so be ready for that and i'd also recommend particularly in the winter well anytime really but consider adding some kind of return to home function on the model and then if you do lose orientation or the visibility changes drastically and you're starting to struggle then you have an old deer switch that you can use to recover the model uh, get it back towards you turn on those leds and then as soon as you've reacquired it if you're comfortable carry on the flight or at that point then bring it in land it safely and call it a day couple of tips for FPV flying. Now, I love to fly FPV at this time of year. Uh, everything looks so different, uh, sometimes barren with all the trees stripped of their leaves. But when the snow's fallen, it is fantastic. Again, I still add LEDs for orientation support. Uh, I tend to find that things like goggles and lenses uh, can get steamed up and get lots of moisture on them. If you're flying around and it's, it's quite lots of moisture in the air, then it can condense out on the lens. When I'm going to the field, personally, I will put the goggles and the camera equipment uh, in one of the passenger footwells in the car with me so that the car heater keeps them all nice and warm. Uh, if you don't have goggles with a fan, you're going to struggle. You can use a screen, and sometimes screens are better on overcast days. You don't get that same kind of glare problem. Uh, but if you have something like the um, Fat Shark goggles where they have the inbuilt fan, then make sure that that's running. 
Another quick tip, uh, the fan on things like the Fat Sharks only runs, I think it's like seven, eight minutes for every press. Uh, if you're flying something like a fixed wing model that's going to fly longer than that, uh, keep, just be aware of that because I've had it where I'm having a lovely flight and then suddenly realize that my goggles are starting to steam up because the fan stopped. So you just have to press that button again to start the fan. But be aware of those things because this is the kind of stuff that can catch you out in winter that you might not have encountered in summer. And the last one with FPV is you might find that the camera that you've been using all summer uh, that worked perfectly is really struggling in winter. Now, most modern cameras have a really wide dynamic range and can handle looking into the sunshine uh, and low in the sky and still expose the ground. Cameras that are a little bit older that aren't as good will struggle and overexpose the sky and you'll lose all the detail in the ground. Uh, test your camera, make sure that it's going to work okay. Uh, don't assume that because the camera that you've had is fine in summer where everything's in full sunlight that it's going to be the same in winter and you might end up tweaking some of the settings on there too. Last couple of things about you, the pilot, obviously wrap up warm, take your Wellington boots because it's going to potentially be very cold or very muddy in the normal places that you fly. I've already talked about the fact that your fingers will get stiff. Uh, do take gloves with you to put your fingers into. There are kind of uh, big gloves that you can put your hands and radio in. I'm not a fan of things like that, but I know other pilots are. And be aware of the shorter concentration span. I was actually flying, as I'm recording this video, I was flying yesterday with a friend of mine and uh, we were kind of going inside after every two or three flights to have another cup of coffee and just warm up and get that dexterity back and uh, get that warmth back in our bodies before going out back to the field for another round of flying. So if you keep some of those tips and tricks in mind, hopefully that's going to help you get through winter. If it's your first winter, good luck. It's a fantastic time to fly. You'll find that you will get up in some mornings and you have those clear, bright, cloudless mornings without a breath of wind. And those are perfect flying days as long as you wrap up warm and keep your eye on the LiPo batteries and make sure that you have everything you need at the field and your FPV camera is going to do the job for you. If you follow some of that advice, you should be able to get through winter, have a great time and have everything more or less in one piece when we come out the other side and start to fly in spring. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.